Hello, we are uh, the artist duo Havakut from Germany and we are in our show Rental Asylum in Coe Hilford Gallery, Los Angeles. Yeah. So the show is called Rental Asylum, um, you know, coming from the mental asylum, obviously, um, or play on that. Um, we actually wish there was a place, uh, like a hotel or something, we could check into. I guess there is, it's like a rehab. but. We just feel like we need to get away sometimes from this crazy world, actually. So the craziness is probably not so much inside us, but outside right now. Um, and all the, all the canvases, all the characters we, we painted, they have their little, you know, um, their little drama, I think. But you'll, you'll notice that um, there's still all really calm and um, kind of like uh, how can I say well they they found a way to to deal with turmoil and survive it it's something I I read about um, the Kennedy family actually um, so JFK's sister she had she was lobotomized um, it's really sad. It's really, really sad. The whole thing uh, happened to so many, most of, you know, mostly women in the, um, in the middle of the last century. And it was, I guess, done to quiet women down. Um, it, when they were considered wild or maybe also a little too creative, you know, and, um, I thought about this that, you know, about, about how men felt threatened, maybe, by um, just women who thought for themselves, who, who wanted to break through the, the conventions of the 50s and, and that, and um, I thought maybe they were afraid that those women, because it was done by, I think, 80% female patients, um, they saw something that was there in the world that they didn't see, and they didn't have that certain, you know, they, they didn't understand what, uh, why they were so, um, <laughs> so different, I guess. So I told the story to Fog, and we talked about this, and um, came up with the idea, you know, to use the symbol of the three eyes, really. So like this extra eye that can be also seen in, in with Hindu deities. Sometimes there were gods with three eyes. Um, the three-eyed symbol you, you actually find in, um, there are a lot of other references. And, and Falk took a photo of his wife, actually, and um, started working on this canvas with this photorealistic details with his wife's eyes and her lips. And then he returned the canvas to me, and I started giving her this face and then, you know, the depth of the hair. and, and at the end the title so usually our pieces start from something we you know we read or see or just something people tell us so it's it's a it's usually inspired by other stories and then we turn them like into i'd say we illustrate those thoughts yeah. right and, and this canvas is kind of an uh, unusual way for our work uh, uh, in the normal way, Jasmine is starting with a uh, kind of an illustration, a sketch on the canvas, and I make then the photo shooting for this to use this as, as a photo reference. So this one is opposite example. But it's a couple of different ways to, to but realize it. The start is usually yeah. something, a story that sticks with us in some ways. We used to be inspired by poetry a lot or by lyrics. Nowadays, I feel like it's just the news, I think, and those as I said, random, not, not random stories, but really just kind of really frustrating things that we find and stick in our, our minds. I really love Miss Robot. I love all of them, but I love Miss Robot. Um, I think the, the balance between the photorealism and then the, um, the looseness, the messy, the messy part that, that I create is it's very nice and represents both of our skills very you know very well um, but I also like the like the story behind it because Miss Robot is um, she has learned about humans so, so you know that's kind of what I 
but I see when, when I look at her, it's almost like, yeah, you humans created me. I had no idea what you were, why, you know, what you do, why you do what you do. But um, she's accompanied by this lab monkey. Um, and yeah, that's another thing that I found online and I wish I had never seen those photos of those um, laboratory animals, laboratory monkeys. Um, and this Miss Robot basically is, uh, has learned what she knows about humans from what the monkey has told her. So that's, that's what I see in that picture anyway. And uh, yeah, and the title is, um, is basically saying the more I learn about humans, the less I want to be part of them. And that's actually really, really what we feel sometimes, you know, looking at the world. The canvas Astro Boy, it's from my point of view a very nice uh, balance from our Heracoot skills. So um, the plastic effect of the Astro Boy painted with spray paint. So this, this, this shininess, the glossiness, the plastic effect is really good to capture with spray paint. And it's in a good contrast to the, to the looseness and the wildness Jasmine create around with the unicorn in the background. The funny thing is too, it's, it's, just, it's bringing together two worlds. You see Astro Boy and then you see a unicorn. And what they have in common is immortality. Um, the story of Astro Boy is, you know, is pretty sad because um, his creator um, got rid of him because he wouldn't age. And that his creator, that scientist who, who built Astro Boy, he was also a robot, um, you know, he just kind of didn't, didn't like the idea that he lived forever, um, why he himself was aging and dying eventually. And um, I thought about unicorns because they've been around you know, since forever really and um, they must have seen generations of unicorn fans come and go and age and die and and I thought actually how horrible it is to be in that place and you know how, how we humans don't you know we want everlasting life and we want to, to live and be for, forever young basically and then when you think about it it's not actually that cool if you see so many people pass away and die around you and then you'll be there grieving forever. So that one's called We Shouldn't Be Envying the Immortals Too Much. Actually on a very early stage on our Heracoot work we started using the animal heads as a symbol and we use it in the same way like uh, symbols in the fable. So, um, you know, the fox got his uh, own characters like a pig and also this canvas that you see here now the main characters are also wearing uh, animal heads and uh, you see uh, two cats and a mouse together on this. Uh... It's usually animals, you know, rodents and, and uh, predators, and in that case cats, they don't get that close <laughs> and are comfortable with it. But in, in that piece, um, it's actually a rat that says, I'm not going to leave the ship without you because, you know, that refers to that saying that the, the rats are leaving the ship, you know, as it sinks. But we think that in, you know, in times of crisis, even animals should, I mean, uh, enemies should, should um, be, you know, should overcome their differences and stick together. Because uh, if there's a crisis, then we're all in it together. It's the swan and, and when, when we painted it, it was super cold in Germany. Um, I love how swans stay with us though, during those cold periods. And, when you look closely, the, the face of, of that girl um, wearing the swan head, um, it almost looks like there's ice on her, on her um, eyelashes. And there's, it's, she's very calm down. It's almost, you know, swan, swans are so beautiful, I guess, because they're just so elegant. But um, the title of that one is referring to what the swans of, this one of the story ugly duckling had to endure <laughs> uh, yeah you know and if the swan had believed what the other birds had to say about him when he was ugly he would have probably committed suicide or you know something <laughs> but I you know luckily it just stuck around and became really beautiful
Yeah, so usually, you know, what I want to say about all of our, the symbols that we mm. use, we use the symbols knowing what they mean and what they have meant and where they come from, you know, the fables, the mm. mythology stories and all. But we always put a twist on them, we put a, we put our way, we just use them to, to actually say, you know what, yeah, you have learned this and that about a certain thing, but try a different perspective. So that's also another reason why we painted that rat outside the gallery. Everyone has, for, not everyone, but most people um, find them repelling or, you know, they, they see a rat and they're like, oh, oh, no, some filthy thing is going on here. Um, but, and then, you know, they stand for snitching and all these things. But um, they're such smart beings and they are actually so social and that gets overlooked so fast. And that's one of the reasons why we love them and paint them big and, you know, they're, they're part of our environment. They've always been with humans and um, it's, it's just kind of, I think it, it, if they could talk, they could probably <laughs> say very bad things about us too. So. Um, I, I don't know, I think it's every, every, every creature needs love. This little installation of ours, which um, it was actually so much fun to do, um, but it's, it's, uh, it's pretty much summing up what, what's happening in our brains before, before we go to sleep at night, I think. <laughs> it's like rewinding and hearing all those little voices talking to us and then um, well, for me, it's it's like that, and um, sometimes I really have to just get up or get my phone out and write something down. Um, and I, I think it, that's, I guess, also how the whole mental asylum, rental asylum thing came about. Because what we do and we, with our art is also creating an outlet of some craziness that's that's inside of us. So if you read the text on the wall and it doesn't make any sense to you, welcome to our world. <laughs>